At Washington College, Sophie Kerr is famous for endowing one of the largest undergraduate literary prizes in the world, as well as scholarships and programs to support a vibrant writing culture. But who was Sophie Kerr? We know that she grew up on Maryland's Eastern Shore in Denton, where her father had a nursery and a fruit farm. As a young girl, she accompanied her father on the steamboat to Baltimore, where they sold produce. When she wasn't helping on the homestead or attending school, she read everything she could lay her hands on. At only 14, her parents sent her to the newly founded Hood College, an all-women's college just a short train ride from Baltimore. In that collegiate environment, she began writing very highbrow essays. As she graduated with the first class of Hood, the president advised her, I hope, I certainly hope you will stop using slang. Armed with those words of encouragement, she returned home and announced, I am going to be an author and you might as well buy me a typewriter. Sophie began writing stories first by longhand and then typing them. At 19, she sold her first short stories and wanted to work for a newspaper. She began thinking about magazine journalism as well. Her father said, she must find some larger horizon for her vitality and keen intelligence. Her mother agreed, but felt she should wait to leave home until her sister is married. She ended up taking a graduate history course at the University of Vermont, where she continued to develop her critical thinking skills. She later said, it was the very best thing that ever happened to me. While studying in Vermont, Sophie began writing for the Pittsburgh Gazette, which led to a full-time staff journalist position and a series of promotions. After taking up residence in Pittsburgh, she married civil engineer John Underwood, but divorced him four years later. She continued to publish as Sophie Underwood, placing many of her stories in Women's Home Companion and eventually landing a job on their staff in New York City. She worked her way up to become managing editor while continuing to publish her own fiction in the most popular magazines across the country. Sophie Kerr became a household name with a huge following, even before publishing the first of her 23 novels. Once she established her readership, Sophie resigned her editorial position and began writing full time from the quiet upstairs study of her brownstone in New York. Her thoughts returned to her childhood and she introduced readers across the country to the sandy belt of the Eastern Shore. Her stories captured the heart of Washington College's First Lady, Mrs. Meade, who said that Sophie makes the steamboats on the Chesapeake sound as glamorous as Mark Twain made the Mississippi sound. She was also using some experimental literary techniques that were coming into vogue by the 1920s, the unreliable narrator, time shift, and the compression and expansion of time. As a feminist, she made the case in her stories that women did not have to give up their freedom and independence by marrying. In honor of her contributions to literature, President Meade invited Sophie to come to campus for an honorary degree alongside Eleanor Roosevelt. Sophie's celebrity continued to grow as a novelist, a playwright with a show on Broadway, and a screenwriter for film and television. Her elegant house became something of a literary salon, where she also became a gracious hostess. She declared, I can make better gingerbread and better spoon bread and better strawberry preserves than anyone in the world. Well, this is not arrogance, but a beautiful, exceptional truth. And so she wrote a cookbook. Guests had the privilege of meeting her succession of feline companions with names like Useless, Worthless, Peerless Percy Perkins, Thomas Hardy, and Zuzu. Sophie returned to Washington College in 1951 and asked President Gibson an important question to which he responded, we do not vivisect cats at Washington College. But that's far from the final chapter of Sophie's story. She saw Washington College as a place that shared her values, a connection to the land, a love of writing, a commitment to intellectual discourse, and a respect for all living creatures. With her bequest to Washington College, Sophie Kerr created a legacy of literary fulfillment in generations of young people who used their Washington College education to think more broadly, to persevere, and to write the world anew.